Anita is head of hardware infrastructure transformation at Microsoft. And we're gonna we're gonna you know switch it around here. We're gonna do a Q and A session. Uh, and and Anita, of course, I have some prepared questions. But if there's questions that you've seen that you want to start to answer first or set up the stage as you see fit. Hi, Jean-Marc, and hi, everyone. Thank you for having me here. First, as we go through this, um, what we're going to touch on and what I'll be mentioning is applicable. You know, we, we wanted to talk about um, on talk on AI agent implementation in the enterprise. And those are the questions that uh, we prepared. But um, a lot of it is applicable beyond enterprise. It's just that my experience has been that these concepts are more common in enterprise. Uh, because they are the ones with lower risk tolerance, you know, uh, existing legacy systems, and maybe the appetite and resources to build a robust, uh, custom, and scalable AI, AI agent solution. So keep that in mind, right? It's not just enterprise specific, but I think it is the superset of these challenges. Um, and before we get to your questions, um, John Mark is. I will be staying away from uh, specific tools and frameworks for the most part because um, these change uh, rapidly, right? As we've seen throughout the day. And I believe if you master the fundamentals, then you can easily adapt and choose the right tool to accelerate your um, own deployment. Um, so if you are a tech business leader uh, planning your AI agent implementation, uh, this will give you the big picture of things to consider. And then if you are an AI engineer or an AI builder, this will help you understand how to scale and make a bigger impact. So let's start with your first uh, question and I'll also be sharing. Yeah, yeah. so, you know, to set up the stage, you know, you, you've been deploying, you know, AI and AI agents in production and enterprise environments. What, what do you think are the primary challenges there that people face once they get to that camp? Yeah. Um... Great, great point. This is point. This is based on my own experience. Um, it's not just plug and play. You know, when companies try to roll out AI agents um, and generative AI solutions in general, they run into a host of challenges that cut across technology, data, people, and governance. So it's definitely not just technology. First off, there is the legacy headache. Uh, most enterprises rely on old school systems, you know, think ERP, CRMs, clunky databases, or worse, <laughs> internal tools with old uh, APIs or no APIs that were never built to talk to modern AI. And, you know, even when those APIs do exist or when connectors exist or when, you know, we can use MCP, they often break as soon as something changes upstream. And uh, the pain here is that unlike traditional software, which tends to throw a clear error most of the time, AI agents might keep working. And I say working in quotations here, but they're actually quietly generating wrong or misleading results. And this is especially dangerous in regulated fields like healthcare, finance, legal, where an almost right answer can actually be a disaster. Next, um, let's talk about the data privacy and compliance. You know, AI agents, as we all know, need massive amounts of information to work. Um, and some of that information is sensitive. If you're not careful, these agents can access or even leak data that was supposed to stay locked up. And a classic example, or I think it's becoming classic, is, you know, you have an employee who downloads a confidential database report to uh, their desktop for legitimate reasons, right? That employee had access to the database through an authentication service, and the agent does not have access to the database. But because the agent has access to that employee's desktop, now it bypasses every backend security protocol that you had in place, and that confidential data can end up in public documents or um, in the wrong hands. And of course, as I said, you know, it doesn't stop a technology. I think organizational culture is a major hurdle, and that does show up more in large enterprises versus if you're, you know, a, a single um, freelancer or a small business, because employees tend to be apprehensive or resistant, and not. I don't think it's because they perceive it as a threat to their jobs. But because they worry that AI agents dramatically change existing workflows. So uh, there's that mi mistrust there. And I think that's why you need proactive change management, because without buy-in from real users, 
um, <clears throat> even the most sophisticated agent, you know, will be left on the shelf. We've talked, uh, I think there've been plenty of uh, uh, mentions how more than 80% of AI solutions never leave the lab. And that's one of the reasons, right? You don't have buy-in from your users. <clears throat> I think you need to uh, show your users how it will make their life easier. And my experience is that the key to adoption is user experience. Don't make your employees switch apps or learn a whole new interface uh, just to use the agent. Meet them in their existing workflows. And of course, you know, there's uh, the other challenge is cost. I'm not going to get into too much detail here, but building AI agents at scale isn't cheap. And the ROI is often uncertain. I think we're still, um, in many cases in enterprise, we're still learning how to measure the ROI of generative AI solutions and AI agents implementations. So I would always recommend that companies start with a pilot that's focused high in, on a high impact use case and then um, scale from there to additional use cases. And then another core challenge I'd like to touch on is the unpredictable behavior. AI agents, especially those powered by large language models, don't always behave as expected. And that's because models, as you know, are stochastic and sometimes producing uh, different outputs for the same input, or they make reasoning errors. And in an enterprise scenario, this kind of inconsistency is problematic because business processes tend to demand reliability and repeatability. And I highlight this as a challenge because I think it often surprises um, leadership in enterprises that an AI solution that performed well in the demo can then erratically um, act in uh, production. I think it's the so-called Jekyll and Hyde uh, problem. This is something that I touch on in my um, MarTech Post article around agent and agents and how to address that with the uh, comprehensive uh, data source in production. Yeah, those are the challenges in summary, John Mark. What do you What do you think is what are a few solutions or approaches to you know ensure these AI agents? And you've touched upon it, but I just want to double click on that: are reliable, or consistent, or predictable? Do with yeah, this. let's let's talk about that. Um, I think there's if there's one thing that every business leader I've come across wants from uh, AI solutions is reliability. You can't have an agent uh, give you different answers for the same question or worse, hallucinate data. And here's where I recommend enterprises go back to fundamentals, specifically a tried and true software engineering framework. Uh, I recommend they adopt test-driven development. And this is something that uh, became clear to me just in the last uh, two weeks as um, Alpha Evolve launched. So before letting an AI agent loose in the wild, build robust evaluation frameworks. Think of them as a um, suite of unit tests for the agent. You know, you want to define what's good um, for each task and then run the agent through a battery of scenarios until you're confident that it delivers the right answers consistently. Google DeepMind's Alpha Evolve is a great example because it uses automated evaluators and uh, it only keeps um, <clears throat> solutions that pass objective metrics. And I think enterprises should do the same. You know, you want to validate before you deploy these things. And of course, some outputs may not have some objective metrics. But you can still create confidence filters based on uh, human evaluation. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind is that reliability isn't just a pre-launch concern. I think monitoring has to be continuous post-deployment. So you want to set up dashboards to track the agent's decisions, error rates, and uh, anomalies. Uh, my experience has been that you know, every single AI solution or AI agent project needs tweaking after launch. Continuous monitoring and rapid response to feedback is non-negotiable. And I know monitoring is not sexy, but you can make it so. Take a look at this dashboard here that I built uh, that I think makes monitoring se sexy and it empowers you with so much knowledge. Uh, one cause of inconsistency is the inherent stochastic nature of AI models, which I mentioned earlier. And that's um, a feature that produces different results on different runs. And to counteract this, enterprises can adjust the AI model settings and um, 
usage to favor consistency. And of course, there are trade-offs, right? Um, because the, the more you constrain your model, the less the variety of output you have, but you have to think about your use case there. And you can, you can um, constrain, constrain that randomness by setting low randomness, by fixing the model version in production, which means, you know, don't just use any update without running your evaluations first, just because, um, you know, OpenAI pushed a new model, it shouldn't automatically go into production in your solution. First evaluate that that update works. And then double check your outputs, especially for mission critical tasks. Um, and then one of the things to keep in mind is that when things do go wrong, make sure that you have a fail safe uh, option for that agent where if it's unsure, it escalates to a human and doesn't just guess or hope for the best for the best. Yeah, and I think just to sum it up, uh, keep your first agent simple and focused because if you just build sophisticated but unreliable agents, you're causing more harm than good. So that's maybe for my last question for this session is, you know, you talked about starting with a simple agent and there's more and more autonomous agents that are coming out. What are the ways to kind of mitigate the risk associated with this autonomy that's powerful, useful, valuable, but yet risky. Excellent point. I think autonomy is both the magic and the minefield of agentic AI. Uh, on the upside, agents can reason, act, and even make decisions on your behalf. But on the, on the downside, if you're not careful, those decisions can go wildly off script and sometimes with catastrophic consequences. So how do you help uh, reap the benefits of autonomy without the risks? First, you set clear boundaries. You want to spell out in code and prompts what the agent can and cannot do, right? If your agent should never initiate a payment, make that technically impossible. I think guardrails aren't just some policy that are um, written in a document and then stored on a drive. They have to be coded technically. Second, you want to keep humans in the loop for sensitive tasks. The idea of fully autonomous agents, I think, is still, it's a great idea, but it's still very immature in terms of the technology that we have today. And you can choose a level of human oversight uh, based on uh, the risk of the task. Think of it like a co-pilot, right? It, the agent can draft your email, but the human, you, is the one that presses send. And then as your confidence is uh, gross, you can loosen the reins. Reiterating what I mentioned earlier, I think it's important to make everything auditable. And I know it's not sexy, but it is something that um, uh, that kind of transparency builds trust and not just with your users, but with regulators and auditors too, which are um, a key area for enterprise. Uh, the other thing that you can do is to have um, an emergency kill switch. Think of it like an end on cord. It's a concept that Toyota, Amazon have had for a while. And if the agent starts to go rogue, anyone monitoring should be able to pause it instantly or roll back the changes if needed. I don't think this is a nice to have. It's something that you should build in there. And then uh, finally, you know, don't ever lose uh, sight of ethics and compliance because autonomous agents, especially for enterprise, they have to be aligned with uh, your company policies to avoid reputational and legal risks. So you want to run regular reviews for bias, you know, for fairness and for policy alignment. If your privacy policy changes, make sure that your agent reflects that. In the end, you know, you want to think of your agent as a powerful but unpredictable team member. You want to empower them, but never give up ultimate control. And Jamark, I know we don't have any more time. Uh, I was going to go over the best practices. However, uh, you can actually request a step-by-step -step AI agent implementation framework directly on my uh, website. And I'm actually working on making that interactive and with a lot of detail. So you can take it and it will walk you through on how to implement AI agents in enterprise. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you, Anita.